I'm gonna start with number
Hello and welcome to episode 2 of uh, Let's Play, Make, Learn and Teach. Um, this is made by uh, Super Hyper Turbo Games and my name is Lloyd. Uh, last week we went through the essentials of uh, Unity um, and this week I thought that we would go into the second pathway. Uh, the first pathway it was essentially uh, how to install Unity Hub getting around sort of the editor um, starting a, your first sort of micro green project um, and essentially we sort of completed that um, we didn't publish anything because we had to install some sort of visual C++ or, or whatever but um, that's okay we, we can sort of get around that uh, so today uh, we're going to be looking at more of the programming side of things which is quite essential for video games um, and this is episode two, uh, which is interesting. So a week ago was the first one I'd ever done. Uh, this is obviously week two, and the more confident I get with this sort of stuff, uh, the more that we'll be doing over time. Um, hope the music is okay. Hope the sort of mixing is all okay for the stream. Um, last week, uh, just did it to YouTube, and this week we are doing it to YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Uh, but we can record this on YouTube, so afterwards it'll be saved uh, to the Super Hyper Turbo Games channel. Uh, so last week we looked at installing and we used the Visit Unity Learn uh, page in order to uh, start with the essentials. We also went over this platformer micro game, which kind of, if you select any of these, it will go through step by step how to use the editor. Uh, but we're not going to do that today. Uh, we're just going to go through sort of the, the step by step. Now, the structure of these are uh, essentially, I'll, I'll start off with a bit of an introduction um, as to what the episode is, uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, these are sort of, uh, there's no script to them. We just sort of go for it. The reason is that uh, because I'm moving away from Click Team Fusion over into Unity, uh, I want to learn these uh, these. I want to learn along with you, the audience. Uh, so as you watch these, uh, hopefully we'll be able to hope learn to new games engine together, and uh, eventually we'll be making a, a, a demo for a game. Now the demo for the game is called The Veil. Um, this is a video series, and uh, we're going to be making a video game for it. I didn't really talk about much about in detail about what the video game will be, but there is essentially going to be an over overworld. Um, you travel around the overworld, uh, which is a map, and uh, th there's essentially levels. Then you can go into, and it's more more like a Streets of Rage kind of game where you're fighting, and there is a story to it, which I'll uh, get into uh, at a later time. So, without further ado. Uh, let's have a look to see. Uh, we didn't save the one. I, I realized I didn't sa actually save the project from last week. So we've just got the learning project, which had the uh, platforming micro game. If I load this up, just so we can refresh ourselves where we got to. It'll just take a minute. Essentially, we had this sort of game here, and you collected all the coins. And we just made a few few changes to this. Uh, over, you can see on the right hand side, 2D platformer, get started, editor basics and change colors, and we added an enemy. Uh, we're not going to finish this today though. We're going to start with a brand new scene. Cool. Okay. If you open up the Unity Learn Hub, uh, the web page, sorry. You have sort of different pathways you can choose. Because we're doing it together, because it's a stream, I'm just glossing over some of the stuff that you'll get, but we'll go through each of the elements that you have together, uh, and then we'll just sort of see where we have to go to next. Uh, what I've decided on, though, is not to do any of the Get Started with Unity or the Unity Essentials. We're going to now go into the Junior Programmer Pathway. Later on in life, uh, we'll look to do the Creative Core Pathway today or over the next few sessions it says 12 weeks that's a lot so as we go along we'll be learning how to use unity and essentially 
Uh, by the end of it, we'll be in a position that we can start developing the concept for the Veil video game uh, into, into a demonstration. Only a couple of levels. We'll use some uh, artistry along the way. Uh, we'll be looking at doing all of the audio, the animation, the artistry, uh, and all the rest of it. So, let's take a look. So we're going to be learning this together. Uh, you can see Welcome to Junior Programmer, designed for anyone interested in learning to code or obtaining an entry-level Unity role. I would argue that it's good to be a sort of jack of all trades depending on what you want to get to, into. Uh, myself, I like to design the games uh, and I've used object oriented programming to do so using things like Click Team Fusion, uh, which is a fantastic, I'll just quickly show you that. It's a fantastic 2D engine. Uh, a couple of guys in France have made this and uh, it, it has been some popular. popular uh, games that's been released on this from, from memory uh, what games five nights at freddy that was made with this that, that's quite good the escapists that's quite good that was made with this as well anyway i've moved away from that we're going to use something new so i'm going to start the pathway for junior programmer and we're going to see what we've got uh, so this is the second time that i have streamed uh, i haven't done it before Never really recorded myself, never really spoke in this sort of manner. So we're going to be uh, sort of you're learning just, to, just as I'm learning. Uh, this is something new, something I enjoy. I really, there have been times, I've spent a couple of months making different projects for games and they have been some of the best, best experiences uh, I've, I've ever had really. When you release that game or when you get to a point where you're quite happy with the game, it's fantastic. So here we are. Junior Programmer, create with code one. Uh, this first mission in the Junior Programmer pathway will provide you with the core foundation needed to create a wide range of digital experiences in Unity. So just what we need. You'll learn about fundamental programming concepts such as variables, functions, and basic logic through two practical projects. You'll also modify a script to customize a simple Unity experience and the beginning of a personal portfolio which is very important. So as you go along, you'll be learning what you like, what you don't like, your little projects that you'll do. The more of a portfolio you gain or, or build, that will help for employment in the future if you do want to get into the games industry or just make something for your family and friends. Uh, so if we start here on the left-hand side, project getting started. In this introductory unit, you'll be introduced to the course and you will download and install the Unity software. We've already got the software, so let's just see what we have to do. Any sort of videos uh, as we go along, I'll try and stream, uh, stream them to you as well. Uh, and later on in life, as we're developing the game itself, um, through core concept all the way through to that demo uh, that I mentioned, if there's anything I don't know, I'll watch the YouTube uh, video or some learning with uh, on the computer and then um, I'll bring that over to you guys uh, live and then we'll go through implementing what we've learned into the development as well. So this is totally open source uh, way of doing it. And uh, straight up, we've got a welcome here. So I'm just gonna click play on this. We'll take a look together. Welcome to this official course from Unity, where you will learn to create with code. My name's Carl, and I'll be your instructor, teaching, guiding, and challenging you every step of the way. I studied computer science and game development, and have been helping students create with technology for almost 10 years. And I am so excited to help you learn to code and achieve your goals. So what is the goal of this course? Well, it's pretty straightforward. It's for you to learn to code and create with Unity. That means it's not a history of programming course. It's not a theoretical course. It's a practical course to give you the foundation you need to be able to program whatever you want with Unity. With Unity, you can build applications for mobile, like iOS and Android, platforms like Windows and Mac, consoles like PlayStation and Xbox. VR and AR devices like Oculus and Google Cardboard, and a lot more. Think about it. Every app on your phone, every program on your computer, all the technology you interact with on a daily basis was made with code. And if you learn to create with code, 
You can help to build that technology instead of just using it. I'll be teaching you how to code in C Sharp, one of the most popular and powerful programming languages in the world. So as you are learning to create with code, you'll be doing so with Unity and C Sharp, both in demand industry standard skill sets. Now let's get into the details. How are you going to learn all of this? Throughout the course, we'll create five distinct prototypes together, coding every single line of C-sharp from scratch. In each one of these prototypes, you'll learn critical new concepts, expanding and reinforcing your skill set with each new feature you add. After completing each prototype, I'll present you with a skill testing programming challenge and quiz where you can prove that you're ready to move on. And finally, throughout the course, you will also work on your own personal project that is completely and uniquely your own. You'll have lab time to come up with a design and concept for your project, plan it out, and build it. So by the end of this course, not only will you theoretically know how to create whatever you want with code, you'll have already done it. At the end of this course, you'll also be ready to take on the Unity Certified User Programmer exam. That's Unity's official stamp of approval, certifying that you know what you're doing. In this course, you will combine the knowledge of coding in C-sharp with building in Unity, and in doing so, you will be able to create interactive, dynamic, digital experiences. You can use these skills for game development, animation, storytelling, architecture, engineering, you name it. The sky's the limit. So let's start creating. Interesting. Well, a lot to take in there. It's essentially what we're going to be looking to do. Uh, because I sort of work on my own, or sometimes I do bring in teams afterwards, uh, coming up with the concepts and understanding the engine and, and sort of how it's all going to be put together is incredibly important. So I tend to do a lot of all of it, I suppose. Um, so we've watched that now. Just one more video to watch and then we get on with the next part. Before you get started working on the course, there's something really important I have to tell you about how you should take this course. Even though it's just one little piece of advice I'm sharing here, it's so important that we made this entire video to tell you about it. So without further ado, here are the three most important words you'll need to know to succeed in this course. Watch, then do. This course is made up of a ton of videos that you will watch where I'm showing you how to do cool stuff in Unity. But while the video is playing, just watch it. Then, after the video ends, you'll have the opportunity to do it yourself. Watch, then do. If you try to do what I'm doing while you're watching it, it'll be very difficult for two reasons. It'll be incredibly frustrating for you. You'll have to keep switching back and forth between the video and your project, not knowing when to pause, having to rewind all the time, being confused because you missed something, and basically just being super annoyed overall. And two, in trying to do what I'm doing while I'm doing it, you won't actually process or retain any information since you'll be furiously clicking around where I click without understanding the broader context. After every video, there are step-by-step -step instructions outlining exactly what you need to do. So watch, then do. I'm telling you, in these early lessons especially, it's going to be tempting to ignore this advice. But you have to trust me on this. You'll get so much more out of this course and enjoy it so much more if you watch, then do. 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 Okay? I'm pretty sure you get the idea, so let's do it. Okay, I think we've been told. Uh, we're going to be following the sort of advice that they will give us. I trust, trust their judgment. I'm not going to step ahead. I'm just going to go for it. So we'll mark all as complete and we'll continue. And we're going to just start on to the next part. And on the left hand side, it does say install the Unity software. We're just going to have a quick look at that just in case there's anything we're missing. but. 
Uh, I think we could just start with Unity 1. I bet you there'll be some downloading as well. So if there is anything that we need to download, maybe we'll just um, head on over to uh, to a video or, or something similar. We could watch an episode of The Veil, which, which I plan to do later on as well. Okay, so we've got the recommended version. So let's take a look what we have here. Download and install Unity Hub. You can see here we've already got this. So we don't have to worry about that. Oh, I just realized something. I have on uh, HDR. So I'm just going to turn that off. I can make the viewing experience a little better. I need to remember to, uh, to do that in future. So here we go. Back to this. Add modules, Visual Studio. I think that's what we uh, were missing before. So let's just have a quick look at our modules. Can't actually remember how to do it. Okay, let's have a look at this thing here. So select that, and so then click next, installs, and then add. Just add modules. So that's in the little settings uh, cog there. Add modules, a Microsoft Visual Studio. So yeah, that, that that's what I had to install uh, last week. And it took, <laughs> it is about a gig or two or a couple of gigs. So it's quite a big uh, download. So I would recommend doing that sort of, oh, there we go, it's about four gigs. So maybe you want to do that first. Okay, cool. Well, we've done, we've done all of that anyway. Um, we've signed into Unity as well. Uh, so I've got that working there and uh, we can just basically start moving on to the next step let's take a look to see what we it's gonna be a lot of video watching I, I feel in this one so we're just gonna if you have a cup of tea if you haven't go and grab one uh, or get some juice or something like that um, just to help out the mark all of that is complete and then uh, we'll just go on to the next one really uh, which looks like, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Cool. Let's go continue. Introduction. Here we go. Here's the video. You didn't, wasn't wrong. Welcome to the very first unit of this course, where you will begin your journey creating with code. In this unit, we will create a driving simulator prototype where the user can steer a vehicle down a road to avoid obstacles in its path or crash into them if that's more their liking. As you create this prototype, you will learn the programming fundamentals to implement player control. That is giving the player the ability to control an object in the world you've created. To accomplish this, You'll have to take some input from the player. Maybe they're pressing the arrow keys, using the mouse or a joystick, and translate that into some action in the 3D environment. I probably don't have to explain to you how important player control is. Pretty much every game or interactive experience ever made gives the player control over something in the environment. Otherwise, the player wouldn't have much to do. So whether you're floating a balloon up and down in the air from a side view, moving a character side to side from a top down view, or rolling a ball around from a third person view, all of these draw on the same foundational programming techniques. So you'll be able to take this element of player control and apply it to your own projects in all kinds of interesting ways. So let's start creating. Okay, so I just thought, as we're going along, I thought I'd just do a quick sort of uh, sketch of what I want to achieve in the future. Now, because we're going to be doing the coding, there's two things. I already have the concept for the game sort of in my head. So there's two elements that I'm going to be taking from these courses into the into the first, first draft of the demo, essentially. Now, we have two main features of the game. One of which is going to be an overworld. Now, the overworld will have sort of these buildings that you can go go into. Just draw a couple of here. These signify the Vale uh, and its and its village. And then the streets of once you go into these sort of battle scenes, and they're going to be dotted around where 
the roads are. So it's going to be roads sort of just going down to the end game here. And you've got different sort of paths, but at certain points you're going to be fighting. And you could just sort of pop off into one of these, uh, into one of the buildings as well to explore that. Now, the player itself, if you can imagine, is going to be work moving around on a left, right, up and down axis. And it's going to be done in a sort of a 3D uh, sense. I'm thinking more like sort of a, a stick of truth, that South Park game. So that's a good way to visualize it. And then when you do get over to the actual game itself, we're going to have the player sort of moving left and right. And it's going to be sort of enemies, you know, just doing their own thing as well. And they're going to be coming towards you from the right or from the left or from up above. Um, so we're going to be looking at, in my head, I'm going to be looking at the coding and what we're going to be doing and how this then translates into the actual game um, itself. Um, so bear that in mind. This is could be a while away. It could be a couple of episodes. I don't know. Um, but it's a bit of a sneak peek into sort of the, the thinking behind it. So let's mark this as complete. Now we we'll move on to the next bit. Start your 3D engine. So it looks like we're going to be starting our Unity. I've already got it open, as, as you remember here. I guess we'll start with a, an empty scene. Let's see what it takes us. Okay, so we've got... Uh, just wait for it to load a moment. In this lesson, you will create your very first game project in the Unity Hub. Uh, you will choose and position a vehicle for the player to drive and an obstacle for them to hit or avoid. You will also set up a camera for the player to see through, giving them a perfect view of the scene. Throughout this process, you will learn to navigate the Unity Editor and grow comfortable moving around in the 3D space. This is just what we need. In the last episode, we, uh, we created an object, moved around a little bit, but there's not really much you can do with just a static object, so we've, this is going to be a bit more interesting. Again. We're going to be doing lots of videos today, but as he mentioned, uh, I forgot what it was already. I think it was watch and do, uh, watch then do. So we're going to follow that mantra as we go along, which is why this, this episode is going to be a bit longer than the previous one, which is about half an hour long. Um, and then hopefully we're just going to see how much we can do today and then we'll pick it up uh, tomorrow. And I'll make sure I save it this time as well. So. Uh, let's take a look at oh, uh, materials, the starter files. Perhaps we should download those. It took a second, so maybe we'll come back to that. Um, let's start with start your 3D engines. Let's we are about to begin working on our very first prototype, where we'll make a vehicle that can drive down the road. To do this, we will create a project for the first time, use the Unity interface for the first time, import assets for the first time, and navigate the 3D environment for the first time. That's a lot of firsts, but don't worry. We're going to take things one step at a time. By the end of this lesson, you will have your first prototype with a vehicle and obstacle set up on the road. As you know, Unity is a powerful professional program with a ton of functionality. So when you open it for the first time, you may feel a little overwhelmed by all of the windows and buttons and icons, but with a little time and practice, you will be able to move around this interface with your eyes closed. After you're familiar with the layout, one of the most important skills we'll work on is navigating and positioning objects in the scene view. The scene view is the interactive environment where you can design your world in three dimensions. When you put your vehicle in the scene, for example, you can move it side to side on the X axis, up and down on the Y axis, or forward and back on the Z axis. You can also rotate objects around each one of these axes, scale them on each of these axes. You can even view your object on each axis. You can think of CMU as the movie set for your project, where you can see all the behind the scenes stuff that the audience won't necessarily see. And just like a movie set, you have a camera in your scene that you can position to show the player exactly what you want. In Unity, what you can see through the camera is called the game view. Since it's the view 
that the player will have during the game. So for this prototype, we wouldn't want the camera here or here, so we'll position it behind and above the vehicle, giving the player a clear view of the road ahead. And to make all that happen, I'll see you in Unity. Okay, so step one is going to be make a course folder and a new project. So the first thing we need to do is create a folder that will hold all of our course projects, then create a new Unity project inside it for prototype one. On your desktop, somewhere else you'll remember, right click and create a new folder and we'll call it create with code. So I'm just going to do that over on the other screen a moment. So let's pick somewhere. I really don't know where I'm going to put this. Uh, we'll just go down to maybe um, I'll just stick it on the desktop, I guess. Just like it says. So, uh, create this code. Cool. And there is our folder. So, create a new Unity project using the 3D template. Okay, so we'll just shut this down for a moment and go back to here. Projects, new projects. And we should see 3D template here. And we'll call this create with code. Uh, I'm guessing that's what it wants us to call it. Uh, yes, it does. So uh, select create project. Cool. Now we have an empty project open. We need to import the assets. So we downloaded the file um, and we're going to extract it from the location, which is in the downloads. Extract to here. Lovely. Okay, and we're going to import this. So, how do we do that? So, it says in the project window, in the assets scenes, double click on the prototype one scene to open it. Okay, so how do we import this? I've just clicked the uh, link here on step two uh, to take us to the import a local asset package. Open the project in the Unity editor. In the top menu, go to Assets, Import. Okay, cool. Oh, it's it, oh, it's importing. It's already doing it. Okay, okay, interesting. Okay, so so we'll just leave that go for a moment. Uh, in the top menu, go to Assets, Import, Custom Package. In the File Browser window, navigate to the Unity package the file you want to import and select Open, and select Import to import the assets. You can find them by going to the project window and opening the assets folder. When you've completed this, return to your learning experience. Uh, okay, so it, it's already doing something. I guess we've already got it sort of imported down here. No, no, this is just the, the 3D space that we're gonna be working with. So it mentions, go into the assets. I can't see to import package, so try that again let's just go back here go to asset in the project unity I'm a little bit confused and this is why we're doing this together so have I already got it down here that's a no here it's a no so, oh okay I think I've highlighted the correct place that I want it to uh, sample scene, sample scene. It did actually say to delete the sample scene. In the project window, in assets, scenes, double click the prototype one scene to open it. Delete the sample scene without saving. Okay, so let, let's, let's import our package. It's in downloads, prototype one, start files. Yes, please. in there so now we have our course library on the left hand side and I can see everything that we sort of have here the ground obstacles the sky and the vehicles uh, let's see if this is the correct thing to do not sure so project yeah cool scenes prototype we just oh 
Okay, so I double clicked on prototype there. And now we can look around the road. We got there, we got there in the end. So uh, essentially what I did was right click down here, right click import package, custom package, selected the file. And then when I went to the scenes, it did say to delete the other one. So I'm just gonna delete that straight away. Prototype, I double clicked it. I don't know if you can sort of, uh, sort of drag it in or, or whatever, but here we are. It's our road. Okay, so we're, a bit, we're there. Somehow we got there. So the next bit is to add your vehicle. Okay, so again, we're gonna watch and then we're gonna do. So here we go. So now that we've added in the starter assets for our project, we're going to go and add a vehicle into our scene. Make sure to watch me do this before you try it yourself. And just as a heads up, from here on out in these videos, I'll be using an older version of Unity. As you can see, the icons look slightly different, but otherwise everything is going to work pretty much the same. What I'm going to do is in the main section of our project window, I'm going to double click on vehicles. That'll open up that folder and that'll show us all of the different vehicles that we can use in our scene. Uh, I like the red truck over here. I think it looks really cool. So I'm going to left click on that vehicle, drag it into our hierarchy on the left side of Unity. When I let go, you can see that our vehicle has now been added into this large area in the center called our scene view. So all of our assets in our assets folder are what we use to populate our scene with different objects like our trucks. If we wanted to add some cool environmental props, maybe some boxes or trees, uh, mountains, whatever we want to add, that's all stored in our assets folders. And then we can drag and drop them into our hierarchy to add them to our scene. Now the hierarchy actually keeps track of all the different objects that are currently there. So we have our camera, we have a light, we have some environment, and then we have our vehicle that we just added. Now to really see our vehicle and experience the scene view that allows us to visualize everything that's happening in our game, what you can do is hover over the scene view with your mouse. If you hold the right mouse button, right click, and then you can actually move using the W, A, S, and D keys on your keyboard. So if I press W, I can zoom in. If I press S, I actually fly backwards. If I press A, I fly to the left. If I press D, I fly to the right. So you can use all of these in tandem and you can actually move your mouse while you're flying around. So you can see all around your scene. Now, I have a problem here, I've gotten myself lost. I actually don't know where I am. I can see these nice mountains though. So in your hierarchy, if you make sure that your vehicle, your truck is selected, you can see it's highlighted in blue, so you know it's selected. If you wanna make sure on the right side of Unity, you can see in your inspector, this actually shows you what the current object is selected, which is our truck. With my mouse now hovering over our scene view, if I press the F key on our keyboard, this will actually focus or frame back in our object that we have selected in our hierarchy. So that's super helpful. Another thing that we can do if we just wanna get a 360 degree view, if we wanna see all around this truck, we can actually hold down the Alt key on our keyboard. And then with our left click, if we drag to the left or to the right, we can actually rotate around. And what this is actually doing is it's rotating around the center point of our screen, which in this case, is our vehicle because we use our F key to focus on it. So now we can see all around our truck. And then another helpful thing that we can do is if we press the Alt key down and hold it again, we can actually use our right mouse button. And if we click and drag that, if we go to the left, we actually zoom out. And if we go to the right, we can actually zoom in. So. Using all of these different keys, we can navigate around our scene, focus on different objects, and take a look at them in depth. A really helpful keyboard shortcut to know is the undo action. I only moved that vehicle when I was just trying to navigate around the scene. 
I can press Ctrl Z or Command Z and that will undo my most recent action. This is super helpful to know just in case you ever accidentally move something or say you adjust something and you don't like the way that it's positioned in your world, you can just undo that to set it back. One thing to note is undo will only undo our most recent action. So in order to get this vehicle back to where it started, since I actually changed this object three different times, I have to use Control Z or Command Z one, two, three times, and it will set it backwards. So it's very helpful to remember the undo shortcut on your keyboard. So that way, in case you ever accidentally move something or you just don't like the way that something's positioned, you can just reset it back to what it was before. So what you're gonna do is you're going to grab one of your vehicles out of the course library, whichever one you want, left click and drag it into the hierarchy. And then when your vehicle is added to the scene, get used to playing around with all of the different ways that you can navigate your scene view. With your mouse cursor hovering over the scene view, if you hold right click down, you can move your camera around as you move your cursor. If you use the different keys like W, A, S, and D, learn how to move around in the world. Make sure you get some practice in also focusing on your object in case you either get lost or you want a better view. So go into your hierarchy on the left. I think we get the idea there. Um, I mean, you don't want me to explain it three times, but uh, it seems pretty straightforward. Um, I, th I suppose the interesting one, I like the orbit. I like you got sort of the, uh, the WASD keys. Um, for someone, uh, I'm sure much of you played sort of first-person shooters, third-person shooters, or or whatever. The, these days, WASD is pretty pretty natural. I remember 20 years ago, it was uh, the directional keys, and in fact, it wasn't even a uh, an up or down. Uh, you could just go forwards, back, left, and right, and then perhaps even using WASD to move your head up and down, or left and right or the perspective of the game. Uh, there were many different sort of routes to, to get in simulating sort of moving up and down. But these days, it's a bit like you got your camera on the on a neck uh, and you can just sort of look around. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, WASD, right click. I think that's uh, pretty, pretty good to know. Um, uh, the, the one thing I can't remember was the sort of the panning, which is, oh, it's the holding the, the scroll. So if you hold the middle mouse button down, you can sort of pan left, right, up and down. And there we have it. So next, let's add in. Uh, as much as uh, he he said he really liked this sort of red truck, now it's okay, I guess, but uh, tanks. I like tanks more, so let's put a tank in. Um, I don't know why you would choose a red car with boxes over a tank, but, but there we go. Uh, and we can sort of focus on it. Um, and I liked the orbiting around it as well. You can sort of see it from all angles. Very nice. That's, that's very good. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. We're going to add an ob obstacle. Uh, again, we're going to be watching the video. How many of these have we got? There's three, four, five. Great. There's a lot of these. Uh, so we're just going to go through it. Um, and then we're going to follow the steps as well. Uh, and see how we get on. So, here we go. We've added a vehicle to our scene. Now the next thing that we need to add is an obstacle. So we're gonna choose one and place it in front of the player. Make sure to watch me before you do this yourself. Now, down in our project window, where we got our vehicles, we're going to make sure that we go to the sidebar, select our course library so that we can see all the other folders inside of our course library. And then we're gonna go to the obstacles folder and double click. And you can see here we have all of these different options that we can select from. I'm gonna choose this crate because our truck actually has some boxes on it, so it looks kind of similar. So this time I'm going to left click and drag our crate, but instead of going into the hierarchy, 
I'm going to drag it directly into our scene view, and you can see that it's actually updating live wherever my mouse is positioned. And in fact, if I drag it closer to the road, it actually snaps directly onto the road. I can even do it with That's the car. That's cool. I like that. Look, there's a box on the car. So I'm going to release my mouse button now, and you can see our box has been positioned in our scene. Now, in Unity, we actually have coordinates to keep track of where our objects are in the world. So, for example, our truck is actually in the center, the exact center of this virtual world we've created. At zero, 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 you can see that by going and clicking on the truck, make sure it's selected. On the right side of Unity, you can see the inspector window pop up and it expands. Underneath the inspector, at the very top of all of the different options, there's our transform. These are called components. So our transform component specifically carries the data around our position, our rotation, and our scale. The rotation and scale we'll get to in a little bit. With our position, you can see that it's set to zero, zero, zero. If I compare that to our crate, by selecting our crate, you can see that the crate information is now in our inspector. Our crate is positioned at 4.8, negative 0.0 on the Y, and then 4.26 on the Z. Handily, you can actually tell all of these different letters from these arrows over here on our box. So, currently we have our move tool selected. You can actually see which tools we currently have selected in the top left. We'll go through some of the other ones in a bit. With our move tool, you can see the up arrow. So in fact, if I left click and drag on this green arrow, you can see over on the right side in our inspector, the Y position changes. If I want to undo what I just did, I can use Control or Command Z. You can do the same thing with the X, which in this case is this red arrow. And I'll undo that with Control or Command Z. And with the blue arrow, this is our Z. So I'll undo that. So I'm going to reposition this crate and I can do this one of two ways. I can either do it by going to the inspector on the right underneath our transform. If I actually select the box, you can see that all the text is now highlighted. I can actually type in zero. And if I type in zero. I just want to say that the um, X, Y, and Z is one, probably one of the most important languages, uh, you know, terms that you will you'll use in your game development because everything is done with mathematics. Everything has these sort of coordinates. Um, X being side to side, Y being up and down, and Z being sort of forward, forward to backwards um, in the game space. You could think of it as though, you know, Z is north, you know, and then minus Z is south or, or something similar. Um, but using these sort of values, the X, Y, and Z, it's, it's fundamental to the, to the positioning um, you know, the X rotation is going to be the angles um, on the X axis, uh, same with the Y and same with the Z. So incredibly important. Oh, you can see that now our box has moved all the way in front of our vehicle. Now, if I were to set all of these to zero, that would take a really long time and I don't want to do that. So in our transform, you can actually see all the way on the right side of our component, there's this little gear icon. If you're using a new version of Unity, it will actually be three little dots instead of a gear. So if I left click on the gear icon, you can see that there are different options and one of the options is reset position. So if I left click that, now our positions are set to zero, zero, zero. And so now what I can do is if I want to move our box now that everything's at zero, now I'm going to do this the easy way where I can just type in the values in our inspector. So I want this to be a good distance away and it would be a lot of work to just drag it with our move tool. So instead, I'm just going to go into the inspector on the right side in our transform position. I'm going to select the Z text. If I click on it, you can see that now it highlights that text and I can just type in 25 and it automatically moves my box 25 units away on the Z. And a handy thing to know in Unity is that each individual unit, so if I had a Z of one, 
that would actually just be one meter. So we actually moved this box 25 meters on the Z position, which moved it in front of our vehicle. Last but not least, I'm gonna do some cleanup on my different objects. So my crate, I'm going to rename. So my crate, what I'm gonna do is in the hierarchy on the left side, if I right click on the crate, I can rename. There's a rename option. I left click that. Now I can type in anything I want. So I'll call this an obstacle for now. And then with our truck or vehicle, if you select the vehicle in the hierarchy, we can actually rename this through the inspector on the right side. If you see at the top, you have the same name that's in the hierarchy on the left. So if I actually click on that text, it highlights all of it. If I type in vehicle and I press enter, now you see in our hierarchy, our truck has been renamed vehicle. So different ways that you can rename your object. So what you're gonna do is in your project window, select the course library, double click on the obstacles folder, left click and drag one of your obstacles into the scene. And then when your obstacle is in the scene, if you select it in your hierarchy by clicking on it, on the right side, you can see all of the information in the inspector about the obstacle's components. Rename your obstacle to obstacle, and then you're going to go to the transform component underneath that section. You're going to go all the way to the right. There's this little gear icon, left click, reset position. So it's back at zero, 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 right where our vehicle is. And then once you've done that, you can go and select the position Z, click on it, and then you can type in whatever number that you want and it'll move that obstacle in the Z direction. And then what you're gonna do is you're then going to select your vehicle and you're going to rename the vehicle that you have selected to just be called vehicle. Now it's your turn. Okay, so two Im really important elements that they came across was the X, Y, Z, and the renaming. Now, it can get incredibly uh, confusing if you're working with larger projects, lots of assets inside the game scene. Um, you might have multiple scenes per game, but in each one, as you're navigating through each of the, the levels or, or, or the scenes or the component, uh, the areas, uh, you really really is important to, to, to go through that so we're going to sort of just follow his lead we've got these sort of uh, different objects let's, let's just drop them all in we'll work on them one by one so, uh, so so there we go now he said in here let's just rename this to uh, the way i like to do it is to give them sort of um sort of like a hierarchical name now this is an object, so I want to give it an object, and it's a collision object, um, and it's and it's a barrel, and I always call it number one just in case you have number two. Uh, you don't have to do it like that. You could just call it barrel one, barrel two, or whatever. Um, but we'll rename it. The same with create uh, create two. Now you'll see why I do this in a moment. Uh, so collision. create one we're not <laughs> we're not create we sort of got that because of the top i guess uh, here we go and again collision um well, what even is that a barrier um, rename barrier and uh, next we've got a cone Zero one is better to be fair. Uh, let's just change this one to one. Again, object, collision, spool, zero one. And the last one is this boulder. So again, object, collision, boulder, zero one. Now, imagine if you had one that didn't have collision for whatever reason, maybe it was out outside. You might want to have uh, change it to something like no collide or so you can easily see what 
the, the main purpose of those properties are that's attached to that object uh, and again the vehicle rename uh, let's just call this vehicle like he did because there's only going to be one so we're only going to worry about that um, for now so again let's go into each one of these objects we'll just quickly use the three dots uh, what was it now he said reset position which there it goes all zero and then we're going to set the first one to 25 Let's select the next object now you could of course go through this and select all of these to zero and then it will instantly put it to the next location that you want it at uh, doesn't really matter which one we do i guess so we're going to do it we'll see if we can fit all these in and we'll we'll change them accordingly um, zero we'll reset position uh, I think it was 75 yeah so next we'll just go again reset position 125 uh, this one here is this uh, the cone we're just going to put that back to the reset position uh, to zero and then 150 and, uh, 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 quite oh, oh maybe don't do what i just did i just scrolled when i was doing that then to give it a hitch uh, nice and spaced um we've got all of them in uh, let's see what's what's next we've renamed them we've reset them and we put them in so next locate your camera and run the game set the camera in the hierarchy i mean how long is this video it's three minutes okay let's just watch this watch and then do now we've added our player our vehicle and our obstacle to our scene but now we really want to get a lens from our player and understand their perspective so we can actually do that using our camera if you go to the hierarchy on the left side of unity select your main camera by clicking on it you can see that now we have the camera selected this very large rectangle pops up and on the bottom right we can actually see our camera preview in fact if i deselect the camera the preview goes away and if i select the camera again the preview comes back so the preview is actually what we can see of what the player will see in our game and in fact that preview is entirely mapped to this huge rectangle that we can see in our scene. And so this is very helpful to see and understand what the player sees. Our camera actually controls what we see in our game view. So in fact, if I go to the top of Unity and I press the play button, you can see that our scene view changes to this view here, which is our game view. In fact, in the center, the two tabs are side by side right next to each other. So in our game view, you can see that if I try and click on our vehicle here, nothing will happen. I can still select the vehicle in the hierarchy. However, nothing changes here. Versus if I go to my scene, you can see that our vehicle's back there. If I select the move tool, I can move our vehicle again. And then in the game view, you can see that our vehicle actually moved a little bit. So maybe if I run the transform component, if I press like five, okay, cool. So the vehicle is moving, that's interesting. Now, the one thing about play mode is, so this is how we test how our different objects interact in our world, how our player can, for example, control our vehicle. Since I made changes to our vehicle in our scene view, in fact, if I press the play button again, so I stop the play mode, our vehicle actually moves back. Let's see if I, if I can test that again. We'll go straight into the scene view this time by clicking on it. And I'll just move the vehicle back uh, somewhere to like maybe like 10-ish or so. And then I press play again. Our vehicle snaps backwards. So play mode doesn't actually save if we change anything about any of our objects. But our play mode and our game view is really helpful so when we're testing out how our player actually plays and experiences the game we can see that in the game view versus in our scene view where we go to set up our objects position our vehicles move our obstacles in our scene and interact with them that way to create a layout for our environment so 
What you're going to do is you're going to go into your hierarchy, select your camera, you can see the camera, and then if you want to go into your play mode, you can press the play button and it'll go into your game view. In fact, you can use control or command P to actually exit play mode. And if you press that again, control or command and the P key, it'll go back in. And so you can see what your player will see when they're actually in the game. Now it's your turn. Okay. Uh, let's just go back into it then. Uh, we got a camera, which is sort of down here. Uh, I really need to stop scrolling when I when I move around, just in case. Select it there. Now, I really like this sort of. You can see the lines go into the boundaries of of the preview camera, um, which is here. Look, and the guy he was basically saying that if you press the play mode here sort of like it puts it into a into a certain state where you can change these values uh, are we was this meant to be in zero so oh this is the camera so control z let's just select our vehicle move it forward or north by a few i don't know 15 or something like that um, it does move it in the scene view however click play again moves it back okay cool now, if we go back here, we've learned all that now. So next, we're going to move the camera behind the player. Play. Watch me before you do this yourself. So we've learned a little bit about the perspective of our player and what they can see and experience. We've added our vehicle and we've added our obstacle now. So. We're actually going to reposition our camera in our scene so that way we can actually get a better view behind our vehicle so what we're actually going to do is instead of using our transform component on the right side we're going to make sure we select our camera and in the top left you can see all the different tools that we have so for now we're going to make sure that we have our move tool selected it's those four arrows in those four di different directions so Remember, control and hold and then left click on the red arrow. And so we can move our camera on the X axis here. And I want to get it to zero. Cool. And now I'm going to keep my mouse cursor in our scene view. And I'm going to press F to focus so I can shift the perspective again back onto our camera. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this blue arrow so I can move our camera behind our vehicle. So if I left click, and press and hold our control key i can move our camera back somewhere to around say there and then the same thing with our y i will press the control key and hold and left click and drag so we'll put it somewhere about there cool so now our camera if i focus back in by pressing the f and then i'll reposition my camera of our scene view. Now you can see that our camera, according to our preview, is just looking straight off the road. Uh, that's not a helpful perspective at all. So we're going to reposition this camera this time with our rotate tool. So if you go to the top left of Unity, you can see this circle arrows. If I click on that, our rotate tool is selected. And now in fact, you can see all of the different arrows have turned into lines, but these lines are actually well aligned to all of the different axes that we were playing around with before. So the X, the Y, and the Z. Now to make it a little bit easier for us, I'm actually gonna go to the top right of our scene view and you can see this handy little gizmo over here with all of the different arrows. In fact, if I click on this green Y arrow here, you can see our perspective actually shifts to a top-down view from what we would see on the Y. And so I'm going to reposition back over the camera. So now I can very clearly see this green line, which will actually rotate around our Y axis in this case. So if I click on the green line, I can rotate our camera by dragging it to the right or to the left. So I want to drag it, we'll say it's about there, and maybe I'll clean this up a bit later. So that's a good 
behind you. And now, in fact, I want to get a better perspective on our car. You can see it's not entirely in frame. So if I click on this opposite arrow of our zero, this will actually, instead of bringing us to the front of our camera, this will put us behind our camera. And so now you can see we have a better view of our Z axis here. Actually, in fact, I want to go to the X, so I'm going to go to the side view, click that. There you go, better. So now you can see, we can see the Z axis. So this will actually rotate our camera up and down. If I click and hold on this, I can drag it down a little bit. And now we have a really good view of our vehicle. In terms of other tools that you can use to make it easier. So on the top left with all of our different tools, we have all the way on the left hand side, our hand tool. So in fact, if we select our hand tool and we left click and drag, around our scene view you can see actually this is very similar to just moving our scene view camera our scene view perspective the tool next to it that we were playing around with that's our move tool so we can move our camera or any of our objects in these three different directions let's see if i can get that x back there you go cool now you can see all the different arrows the tool next to that is our rotate tool which we use to rotate our camera down towards the player the tool next to that is actually our scale tool which in this case wouldn't really do anything because we're on a camera but if we were to select our obstacle or our vehicle we could make our vehicle larger if we wanted to the tool next to that is our rect tool so this actually combines the move rotate and scale tool all in one tool however this is only very useful for 2d in fact, if I select the vehicle, you can get a better view. There's this kind of rectangular outline around our vehicle. So useful for 2D. In this case, we have a 3D world, so that doesn't really help. If we select the last tool all the way on the right side, this actually combines our move, rotate, and scale tool, and you can actually see all of them around our vehicle. So you can see the rotate tool around it. You can see the movement arrows. If you click on this gray box, you can scale your vehicle up and down. I don't want to do that though, so I'm just going to control or command Z to undo that all the way, so it's back to normal size. So you can actually use this tool to control all the different aspects. Useful little tip to actually scroll through all of those. So if you actually just press the Q key on your keyboard, it'll select the hand tool. If you press the W key on your keyboard without doing anything, It'll select the move tool. If you select the E key, that's our rotate. If we use the R key, that's our scale. If we press the T key, that's our rect tool. And then if we press the Y key, that's all of our tools together for our 3D space. And then one last thing that we can do just to see and make sure that our main camera is set up properly, even though we can see it in our camera preview, is if we go into our game view again by pressing the play button at the top, you can see now our perspective has shifted from side view to behind our vehicle so that's very helpful so what you're gonna do is you're going to select your main camera and you're going to move the camera behind our vehicle and then you're going to use the rotate tool to rotate the vehicle into the frame of our camera now it's your turn Okay, <clears throat> seven minutes for something uh, fairly simple. Uh, so essentially, let's just get this thing started here. Um, I'm sure you, you guys would want to move on to the next one. Uh, I, I, I presume that the way you might be doing this is that we're because we're both going through it together. Um, you know, if you're doing it yourself. I'm not going to ask you to watch then do I mean apart from the fact that maybe we're we're watching it here and then I'm doing it um, you know, it's more more just so that we can all go through it together um, and at this point you know you can go and just do it do whatever you want to do it doesn't have to be at my pace I'm just gonna do whatever I need to do to get this thing looking good so I know I want it on the x-axis on the zero um, I mean, let's just get it all sort of looking a little bit 
neat. So minus, uh, I don't know, minus, minus five maybe. Do a bit more. Okay, so he's c holding control and then stepping up. And then we want to rotate it. Messed it up a little bit, so let's just move it across a little bit. It was controlled, I think, right? Yeah, doesn't seem to be doing it by whole units. I mean, it's stepping, but uh, that's okay. Um, let's just rotate it now, make sure we sort of lined up. Interesting. Okay, so next I want to move it like sort of like this. Move it up a little bit more. I want my x axis to be on zero, this to be on five, and this to be on uh, minus, uh, minus eight. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so essentially I looked at those numbers on the top right and just rounded them off a little bit. Well, game view. To be fair, I think I probably want that a bit further up. So, oops, let's just do that here. Because our tank is a little bit taller. So you would have it a little bit higher so you can see that just in front of the road, um, it's a bit more sort of uh, scaling there. So that's the game preview. Okay, so I can see the end of the road. Let's see our tank. Yeah, it's a bit better. That looks okay. So uh, what have we got coming up? Customizing the interface layout. Okay. Uh, and a lesson recap. So we've just got two left to do. Uh, I've run over, but that's fine. I didn't, um, th these sessions could be anyway, could be any length really, I suppose. Um, so quite happy with that. You can see all of the obstacles coming up. Next, we've got customizing the interface layout. And then next episode after this, it looks like we're gonna be going on to the, one of those on the left-hand side. Last but not least, we need to customize the Unity Editor layout so that it's perfect for your editing, uh, <laughs> for editing our, our project. Uh, so let's just have a look. So we've set up our camera, so now that we have a good perspective of what our player will see, we're going to play around with the actual Unity Editor itself to rearrange some of our windows and make it easier for us to navigate. So a really cool thing about Unity is you can actually reorganize all of these different little tabs that you see to clean up our project and make it a little bit more efficient for us. So in fact, for example, with our game view, if I left click on it and I drag it, it actually snaps out of the view that we're in. And I can put this wherever I, I really want. So I can put this underneath the scene and then we can actually resize these windows. Or if I left click and drag the game again, I can drag it down to the bottom where our project window was and put it down there. So that's kind of cool. We can rearrange things however we want. Luckily in Unity, we can actually just do all of these things with some preset options. So on the top right, all the way past the inspector, in the corner you can see this little button that says default. So in fact, if I left click on that, and since I move things around, if I click on the default button again, it'll reset my entire editor experience to be back to what we had in the very beginning. And then if I click on the default option again, there's other options, so there's a two by three, which is kind of cool. There's a four split, so this is kind of useful, especially if you're doing like a 2D game or something like that. There's a tall layout. And so this one puts our scene view and our game view side by side, which is kind of useful. We have a much larger view of what is happening. So I actually kind of like the tall view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange some things a little bit. So I'm going to make our inspector just a bit smaller. So you see these lines between the windows. You can actually mouse over them it turns into this little drag icon and then you can click and drag 
our inspector, so I'll make that a bit smaller. I'm actually going to make our hierarchy and our project column a little bit smaller too, so I'll click and drag. Now, our project window is kind of messy now, so what I could do is all the way at the bottom right of our project window, there's this little slider at the bottom, so this actually makes our icons larger if I drag it to the right. If I drag it all the way to the left, it actually makes it smaller, so then I can like double click on these instead, and then it'll just create list views of what I can see, but I don't get this cool little previews of our little assets, unfortunately. And then, it's still kind of, it's still kind of narrow. If I had longer names, it'd be really hard to see. So, in fact, I'm just going to turn this into one column entirely, instead of having these two small columns. So, in my project window, all the way on the right side, there's this tiny drop down. And if you're using a new version of Unity, you'll see three dots in a vertical line. So if I click on that, you can see there's a two column layout or there's a one column layout. So if I click on the one column, now it gets rid of my folder previews for what I can see inside my vehicles folder. So now instead, I just have to click on these little drop down arrows and then it shows me all the different assets that I can use, such as the obstacles. The nice thing too is it makes it a little bit easier if I collapse the vehicles folder and then I can even collapse my course library. Now it like looks really clean, which is helpful. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to left click and drag the game window and I'm actually gonna drag it to the bottom of our view and it pops like that. Now one thing that might happen is, for example, if you actually drag it out of a space where there's anywhere it can snap to, it'll actually pop out like this, which can be helpful sometimes, but not entirely ideal. So you can actually just click on that tab again, drag it back and then snap it in place. And now if we make this a bit larger, Cool, now we have a really good view of our game and our scene at the same time. So this is what we as the creator see versus what our player will see when they play the game. And then if we want to actually save this all the way on the right side back to where we set our layouts, if you click on that, at the bottom of the options is actually save layout. So if I click on save layout, I can rename. So I'll call this my layout so now i have my layout saved to use whenever i want so that's super handy so what you're going to do is you're going to click on my layout and you can select one of the different layouts that you think is cool uh, in this case i went with the tall layout and then i dragged out by clicking on the game tab and then dragging it down to the bottom snapped it to the bottom of our scene view so now we have both views together i resized my inspector and my hierarchy just so there's more space and then because our project window got a bit cluttered because it's pretty small down here on the project window all the way on the right side um okay so that's uh, customizing the interface layout i'm not going to go through the recap and uh, it wasn't anything really too complicated there but uh uh, let's just have a quick look at this. Essentially, we had the layout over here. Uh, he went through the tall layout. Started resizing things around a little bit, you know, and, and moving things around, which is fine. But I mean, I quite like the default layout, to be honest. Um, maybe move that over a little bit. Maybe move that in a little bit more. Um, just was a little bit more uh, visible. And maybe move that down because you're primarily going to be working in this sort of space um, and I quite like having it surrounded by those but I mean by all means try try whichever one you like what was the wide one again kind of like that one too you've got your hierarchy over here maybe move that over a little bit move that in a little bit further uh, it's pretty cool okay so uh, we've gone over a couple of the basics on how to use unity importing the assets that they pr presented to us which means that we can export assets in the future uh, we'll be looking to do that for for you guys for the audience as we as we're going through the concepts um, uh, moving moving things around move the camera around placing objects um, and then finally customizing the, the layout so we're going to call it there for today guys the um uh, essentially, I, 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 I'm sorry, uh, Royal Crown Gaming in the chat. You're my first ever chat person, and I, I missed it because I was, I was watching the video. Uh, in the future, I think I'll, I'll remember uh, to uh, 
remember to, to check the chat out as we're going along. Um, so the last thing which I'm going to do each week is because we're making a video game for uh, The Veil, um, what I want to do is, is play an episode of The Veil. Um, we're going to watch episode two today. We watched episode one and episode one of the, the stream. We're going to watch episode two and episode two of the stream. Uh, I've got it sort of set up over here. Oh, oh while I remember, <laughs> no, it's, uh, let's save the project and save the file. Because uh, I didn't do that last week and I lost it. Not that it matters. It was just a queue in, in, in a space. So let's close that out over here. Let's find our browser. Okay, I'm just uh, just sort of figuring this out over here. Okay, so next, let's just pause the music a minute. Go. Oh, word of caution. Um, if there's any sort of kids watching, there are some swears in this. Uh, it is, it, there's a lot of swears as, as the episodes go on. So, uh, parental caution is advised. Uh, it, basically, turn it off if, if you're under, I would say, maybe 18. Uh, anyway, enjoy. Don't, don't forget, uh, I didn't, didn't warn you. Uh, uh, fucking have a fucking lord of that boy. <laughs> you fucking farted on me. Fucking wallop of a fart that was. Fucking knew would get you up and out of bed. Come on, downstairs now in five minutes. Get your fucking kit on. Chop, chop, chop. Right on. Right on. Hey. I'm so depressed. Oh, sorry to hear that, bud. Here we fucking go. It's just my stepdad again. Tony! Not being funny, but can we just watch this a second? We'll talk about you now. Yeah, give us five, bud. Satan's tits are gonna throw a goat into a wood chipper and spray all the guts on the crowd now. Fuck <coughs> oh, me. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? I'm seeing them live in July. Apparently, they change the animal every two hours. When they play Birmingham, they chuck the fuck load of rats and shit. Most of the audience got Viles disease. What's Viles disease then, bud? Get it from rats piss. I think I read it's like a bowler or something. But you bleed out your eyes less. I wish I was going to an event soon. Beaton only said I can't go to the anime convention on Saturday. What the fuck? Yeah, it's shit. Why? Because he's a cunt. He was verbally abusing me for having anxiety and as punishment for having anxiety, he said I have to go hunting instead. But, but the cosplay? I know. Fuck. Oh, I can't get anyone to replace you now either. Unless it's you, Deacon. There's no way I'm going to that shit. Why not? Because anime's fucking gash. I'd rather suck a bag of gone-off dicks. It's all I've been looking forward to. The only thing that... Like, it was like a light at the end of the dark tunnel that is my depression. Your stepdad sounds like a bit of a cunt, to be honest. I'd fucking shoot him on that hunting trip if it was me. Shut up, Deke. You can't fucking kill him. Why not? Just blap him in the head. And when the fuzz show up, tell him it was an accident. Like he got in the way of a bird or something. I don't know, make some shit up. Right, everyone, sorry I'm late. Come on, turn that shit music off today now. Time to do some IT. Oh, Jock, who's this then? I don't know. Sounds like, uh, sounds like Nickelback. Alan, crank up the radio, but they're Nickelbacking on. Fucking hark of that, boys. 
Fucking best band ever going there. Fucking Chaz Kroger. Fucking best singer ever. Fuck I. And that was Nickelback with their new song, Thumper My Soul. Next we have Ed Sheeran and his new single, Drinking All Night and Being Super Sensitive. Oh, fucking knock that off. Fucking can't stand that cunt. Whenever I hear this fucking ginger fucking voice, I just want to fucking smack him out, man. That bird I saw last night likes him. As a thing for ginger cunts, does she jock? Fuck off. How'd it go? Aye, she was alright, she was. Is she fucking whipping knickers down in her? Fuck aye. You wanna watch it, don't fucking fall off, Jock? What, was she off that fucking uh, Tinder, was she? Aye, fuck aye. That fucking Tinder's the fucking future, man. Fucking hell, how many fucking bangs have you had of that now then, Jock? About 14, 15. How long have you had that now then? Since last Friday. <laughs> fuck me in the head, but that's only four fucking days ago. Yeah, fuck aye. Aye, right, come on, pass it you, let's have a look in. Oh, she's nice. She's smart, but eh? What do I do then? Swipe the next one, is it? Fuck guy. Oh, she's alright. Makes me a skirt, but eh? Ooh, fuck me. She's fucking howling, she is. How do I say yes to one then, Jock? No, you fucking don't, you cunt. God, Al, can you imagine if that shit was out when we were fucking single, but? Aye. Just get him, man. Sandra won't know. Oh, you get fucked. Women know fucking everything, but. Wouldn't want to do that to Sandra anyway, boys. Fucking love her to bits, don't I, man? Like a whip bucket of shit, you are. We have a good thing going on. It's just that fucking fat Mongo fucking son of hers. He's still fucking watching cartoons all day, is he? Oh, he's fucking up all night, man. Fucking sleeping all day. No driving him at all. Oh, he fucking walked past me the other day. Oh, but the smell coming off him. Oh, he's fucking him in. Do you know uh, Martin Evans? Oh, Martin Bastard? No, Tight Martin. Martin Hughes is Martin Bastard. But anyway... His boy was into all that fucking comics and Japanese, Korean cartoon shit. Always in his room, always sleeping until five in the afternoon and that. Used to drive him up the wall. Oh, did he, uh, oh, he grew out of it then, did he? Well, no, he died, man. He got it by a fucking tractor, didn't he? He walked straight out in front of his adult cunt. He was 29 years old, still a fucking virgin, on his way to the job centre. Fucking hell. Fucking, what happens to people all like, innit? That's what I always think. Like, young people today... They all fucking skive off, fucking no work ethic in them at all. Like, why can't they just be like fucking, you know, like when we were younger, honest, hard-working, functioning fucking members of society? Yeah, fuck I, but... Author of the There we go. Brilliant. I love it. Uh I did warn you there's a lot of swear words in it. And um yeah. We're gonna go through each of the episodes at the end of one of these streams. Uh just to close it off. One of the reasons is that you guys can get acquainted to it as we go along. Uh no, no, no. I mean, this is obviously uh, it's a it's it's very very good. Uh, let's think of it more like the uh, the South Park, the, the Welsh South Park. You know, it's a two D animation, lots of swearing, but it does the it does get really good. Uh, it's already good, um, and it's just fantastic. What what he's done is brilliant. Um, so there we go. Uh, I'm gonna sort of call it there. Um, thank you very much for watching. If if you have been. Um, you know, so so, let me know uh, what you think. Um, sorry, I missed the the chat from uh, the Royal Crown Gaming guy. That was my first ever chat. I'll remember to have it open in the future. And the next week we'll be doing episode three, which is going to be uh, further going on with our learning. I've shut it down, so we'll we'll find out what that is going to be next week. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, have a good night.